get some good cracks. Welcome back to Seekistan, and today we're talking about something that I haven't, we haven't really seen any other coaches talking about this in the video. So obviously we know drugs, performance dancing drugs work. Drugs, baby! Oh, f yeah, dudes. And you guys know that we're pretty open talking about them in relation to what happens in sports. If there's kind of an unexplained phenomenon, we'll mention that drugs are probably playing a part of that. We're always talking about this in a fashion that's non-judgmental. We're very PC when it comes to drugs. We're we're very liberal with that. Like if people want to take drugs, we're not here to judge them. Um, so we just it's a huge part of all the videos and all the things we do and all the things you watch. It's very it's a massive part of that, you know. So it's important to kind of talk about it um, as candidly as possible. And so today we're talking about no about athletes taking drugs and some of the things we've noticed while coaching people. I uh, just want to emphasize, I'd say 95% of all our athletes are au natural. Uh, Natty um, do not use any form of performance enhancing drugs. And it's totally fine. Uh, we'd never suggest to an athlete, uh, anyone. We've had a few athletes who, usually more higher level athletes maybe, who take performance enhancing drugs. And then due to the nature of being their coaches, it's a partial decision they've made. We coach them. Um, for a variety of reasons obviously for s and c wave thing power thing any random sports you can think of some of these athletes have and do take performance enhancing drugs and we're going to run through some of the things that we've noticed as coaches i think this video might end up convincing people to take here which is not our intention by the way youtube we're not this isn't to kind of, this isn't for people to no. be like shit i should take drugs these are some of the things mostly want to focus on some of the more things that you'd never know so you know drugs work but there's some of the things that really help drugs work and then we some of the negatives that you definitely wouldn't know and they're a yeah fucking pain in the hole for us yeah i think a lot of the time for the negatives uh just to kind of preface this is like a lot of the negatives may not be hugely negative for the athlete but as the coach um or the person tried to help the athlete there mm -hmm incredibly negative you know or they just make your life a bit a bit harder so i think that is a bit of a, a nuanced view that a lot of you might have, have come across before we'll start off with a fairly positive or like something you probably won't be too surprised to know like in terms of a positive of an athlete or like positive of being the coach of that athlete is that you don't tend to have these kind of bad days where things just don't feel great you know most of the time that ship is very very steady as it sails forward you tend to be incredibly consistent over a long period of time which is something you don't get as much with with kind of fully natural athletes um you can plan an awful lot further out in advance you can kind of have a better understanding of where they're going to be in two months time in four months time in six months time because of the fact that they're a lot of their kind of recovery capital is is taken care of you know they've they've much more to play around with um and there's a lot less kind of things coming out of the blue or, or surprises. So what this might look like might be you, you're a natural weightlifter and you're front squatting twice a week, say. One of these days you're supposed to do 150 kilos for six sets of three and you do it no problem, you do your training. And in the next session you're supposed to do 155 kilos for like four doubles or something. And you do the first session no problem, then you come in and do the second session and you can barely get 120 moving for a double and you know everyone knows this most of you watching this are natural we all know what it feels like you're like fuck me yeah. i'm so weak i'm never gonna be able to do anything and you know obviously then the next day or the week after it's gonna be back to normal again you're gonna be back to hitting what you're supposed to do and so what we see with performance enhanced athletes is we just don't really see these days and i honestly think this is one of the biggest benefits to being a performance natural athlete is on average your average sessions are just better quality sessions so the main things we you don't see with taking performance enhancing drugs, if someone's in any way trained, is you don't see just you literally don't see a input and output benefit to one RM. You don't see someone take drugs and then they can squat twenty kilos more without training. We just don't see that. But the biggest benefit is you just do see this consistency across sessions where even psychologically they might be kind of fucked if they're taking an adequate amount of drugs and if they're somewhat held that you just don't see this thing where they come in. And it's like, oh man, fuck this. You know, like they've had like five hours sleep and they're physically will still be ready to rock. And obviously there's a variety of different reasons, dependent on compounds for sure. But it is something you've seen consistently across athletes. And I think this is a fucking huge benefit because you just get, if you've uh, 365 days in a year and you're training for 360 those year, days, if you're getting 299 quality sessions opposed to 200 sessions, like you're getting, mm -hmm. it'll take like, 
you know, you, you're looking at like, as opposed to natural athletes, who might have 200 quality sessions. And so you could literally take three years, sketch up that one year of training for a uh, genetically enhanced or performance enhanced athlete. Like it's so useful. It's very, very interesting to see. And obviously it's hugely beneficial for that athlete as an individual. Yeah, I think that the next thing that kind of dovetails well into that is you don't get those kind of repetitive strain injury niggles. Uh, you also don't get those kind of acute, very high load session niggles, you know, from like, if you get somebody who goes in and does, uh, they haven't done pull-ups in two months, they go in and do eight sets of eight pull-ups and then suddenly they get this kind of like pain in their armpit or they might get excessive lat doms. You don't get those kind of niggles. Now, you get different pain, you get different soreness, that's certainly a, a real inhibiting factor as the coach if they have like excessive pumps or excessive pain from other aspects but in general you don't get those kind of strain injuries you don't get those kind of overtraining injuries just means that like Gurf was saying they get the extra sessions in or extra quality sessions in you also get that extra volume of work in um with a doped athlete that you don't get in with a, a kind of fully natural athlete there's no way of making that up you don't there's no supplement you can take there's no amount of sleep you can get as as a natural athlete that can just kind of allow you to handle that much more volume one of the things i do want to mention is you know we hear this kind of trope or cliche being like yeah well athletes who take drugs they their muscles grow too fast and their tendons get left behind and you're like Maybe our just sample pool is too small, and it is quite small within reason compared to other people who've coached, you know, who might only exclusively coach people on performance enhancing drugs. Uh, you just don't see that. That's not a thing we've ever seen where someone, like, they've got intended injuries because their muscles have outgrown. I, I really think that's just a, a complete nonsense. I don't yeah. think that's the thing. I think it's a thing people like to say just to have something negative to say about drugs in that regard saying why you might be better off it's it's like a, a wada like infomercial being like your muscles will grow too fast but your tendons even though uh your tendons are organic systems that respond as well to performance sensing drugs and they're tightly intertwined with all of your hormones and all of the responses from training and, and for some reason they would be left behind that they, they don't respond to drugs like it's not that's just a trope. Um, it's not even really to do with this video, but I just want to talk about it because I heard it again recently and you see it a, a lot, you know, as people talking about that and it's related to this kind of, we don't see a lot of these RSI injuries. Now, you will eventually, if you train enough, you will certainly get injured. Mm -hmm. Drugs or no drugs, but we don't see that kind of injury, but we don't see these kind of just, even an athlete under a normal training load, a natural athlete that they can withstand, you just don't see this kind of, not they're not quite injuries but those kind of inhibiting pains natural athletes get a lot um where like it might be an injury but it might be two or three sessions where you just can't lift something or you can't do your full sessions because you need to wait for this to clear up just don't seem to get no. that with those enhanced and that athletes. is like they're incredibly common like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, you might be watching this video now and think like oh i think i'm just a bit soft because my shoulders are sore and i can't go overhead for a week and mm -hmm. um, those injuries are so so common like if you look yeah. at realistic reasons why people don't progress with their training it's because of those kind of injuries where they're having to take a week out here a week out there suddenly they miss a third of the year or a quarter of the year where they're not training full balls to the wall because they're holding themselves back in some way and they're either recovering or they're going through an injury or they're about to be injured and not able to lift and they don't realize it yet actually just on that point so if you if you get this nice normal or cruise ship is traveling along and we get injured as a natural at least and we dip down here we will not return to this previous peak of performance that we're at before the injury in the same time frame that you'll see with a enhanced athlete so if we have that like kind of weak dip you're like oh my knee's kind of sore and you're like oh it's fine again uh, if you get that and you do get it sometimes with performance enhanced athletes what you will see is they can literally return back to that performance after like a session or two as opposed to maybe like three weeks or four weeks of a readjustment time or longer uh, the next part then um and it's certainly a positive from our aspect when you're dealing with someone is there's a level of seriousness that comes along with with that person and how they approach their training and it's not like there's not like idiots who take stuff and would come to us to training uh, there obviously is um but a lot of the time when someone's made the decision to go and do this they're they've thought about it a lot they've thought about everything around their training a lot before they've come to this decision and then there just tends to be this level of seriousness that 
this is how I approach my training, this is how I approach my recovery, my sleep, my nutrition. Everything is just a bit more easy to deal with from our point of view because you're dealing with somebody who's taught about things a small bit more and it's not like natural people don't think about things or like if you're non-enhanced, you don't think about all the other stuff too. Of course you do. Um, it just tends to be that like somebody who's come to this decision has gone through years and years of, of natural training. They've tried to maximize it there. Now they're trying something else to maximize it. Um, and it's just, it's easy to deal with as a coach because you've somebody who's who's thought about this. They've made the decisions. It's just kind of less questions from our point of view. Um, not, a, not that there's anything wrong with, with questions, but uh, it certainly is a, a positive from our point of view is that you get this level of seriousness um, and kind of contemplation with somebody who's already gone through all of this thought process. The next thing that I think is probably the most interesting thing, and it's something Roger Chavez talked about as the first time he's in the podcast that I thought was absolutely fascinating, was that you will get athletes on performance sensing drugs, in particular drugs that will work better, is that they will learn skills faster and learn them with a better quality of retention. Uh, there's probably two reasons this happened. One is like a hormonal reason. It's like a CNS interaction. It's a almost direct result of using that particular drug. Some drugs will let you learn skills a little bit better, which for all sports is phenomenal, especially for like weightlifting. But if you're looking at baseball, um, other sports like MMA, learning those powerful skills as best as you possibly can. And if you can do that with a default higher standards, that's so fucking useful. I and mean, you've definitely seen that with athletes. Uh, really see it with our uh, weightlifters and there's not that many weightlifters coached on drugs but there's enough to see where you're like fuck they just yeah. that that thing I did talk about before where you see the best athletes that improve the fastest are uh, athletes that can retain a change and make that change faster and keep it for longer and you just get that you really get that enhanced ability from taking performance enhancing drugs the other reason you learn skills better or better quality improvement is you can do them fresher more frequently and this is something we talked about a lot as well like we say you shouldn't use weighted implements like a weighted bat or weighted punches because they negatively affect that uh, so you don't want to be interfering with things so if you're fatigued it's a similar kind of idea for not using those weighted implements because you're fatiguing things and you're learning a faulty moving pattern and same by the fact if you're training somewhat fatigued uh, it's harder for you to learn a skill and reinforce that good movement but like we said, you don't have you've less of those bad days. So if you've less bad days, you get more quality reps, and then you learn those skills faster. And then when you've got this baseline of a hormonal influence, a drug that's allowing you to learn skills better, when you've got that in conjunction, you'll be able to practice more lifts heavier, more frequently with better quality in each rep. You just get a better standard and better improvement and faster improvement of technical abilities on Z drugs. I think particularly for us in a remote training environment, it that's a huge aspect. Yeah. Like that is, that's kind of the area I notice more than any of the others. Uh, the last thing then is, is like the, the, the undeniable strength and power increases uh, that you get from someone. If you have a weightlifter or a field athlete or whatever they are, mm -hmm. and they were going to have to spend two months or three months or four months really working on a certain aspect, whether that's getting their back squat up, getting their deadlift up, getting their trap bar deadlift up. Um, you can do that in a much much shorter time frame um, you can do it much more effectively and you that top end number can go an awful lot higher uh, when you have somebody who's, who's in that kind of situation so I know I mentioned earlier that you're saying that you don't get this improvement without training but what you should kind of think about it is is they'll still have to train to get that strength and power but if you think about it like gunpowder very very like volatile gunpowder and any amount of training will just set this off for strength and power and so when you take performance enhancing drugs and you do train, you set off this chain of events where you get faster. So if you don't train, the match, that flame is the training, and that's how you set off that process. So if you don't train you take drugs, that gunpowder will never ignite. But once you do, it does burn a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot longer, a lot brighter. And so we do get those benefits. So we do see that just kind of baseline, pow, pow, kapow. So on to the next one, and it's certainly our biggest concern for our athletes is well it is their health essentially so the health negative effects of performance enhancing drugs depending on how much you take and what you do will certainly have an effect the media and researchers in kind of clinical settings with agendas do overblow this for sure but without a doubt 
we're always worried about our athletes health uh, when they do use performance enhancing drugs it's always something that we're concerned about we're like did you get your blood done you're like a lot of the things you'll see like for example you know red blood cells being high blood pressure being high you you are concerned for them and it's certainly a negative mm-hmm. uh, from our point of view because they don't need to be in a position where they're unhealthy to be better performance and there's ways of mitigating that and if they're not on top of it you could see repercussions and it's not something we ever want to see for athletes uh, obviously enhanced or otherwise but with our performance enhanced athletes there are certain things you can look out for that you need to look out for that you can kind of um prevent or inter kind of intervene before it gets too bad and these do happen and it's just an extra dimension that you need to be looking out for and it requires it it can be kind of a little bit disheartening from our point of view because we can only suggest to them what they should do again as they are adults uh, they have these decisions to make themselves and so you're always kind of worried for that at least that they're making those right decisions would be the main yeah that are by far and away the biggest con of our athletes taking or anyone's athletes taking performance sensing drugs uh, the next thing then uh, certainly is a big negative from a, a coaching point of view is like heightened levels of neuroticism that come along with with head use. Um, this is this is something that's fairly well documented in the literature, like from all the way from kind of more strong compounds or compounds you'd commonly hear um, causing changes in behaviour, but all the way through to to the kind of most benign or the most basic level of of PEDs, you certainly do get it. Are you, we've observed, did you get a heightened level of neuroticism? And then when we've kind of gone and investigated it, most of the papers would concur with us that you do get heightened levels of neuroticism in athletes. That's difficult to deal with depending on what sport the athlete is in. If you're in a very, very technical sport, sport that involves a lot of kind of, a lot of analysis of technique, a lot of uh, self-reflection a lot of the time, that can be quite difficult to deal with and it certainly can be a stumbling block for the athlete. It can be a stumbling block for like the, the coach-athlete relationship where someone is constantly really, really kind of harping on about one thing that probably isn't that important to their performance and now they start getting hung up in it. They start getting this kind of the commonly heard paralysis through analysis and they cease to kind of be this athletic being and they start focusing on things that aren't that important, you know, um, things that are just a, a kind of a secondary or tertiary concern for the athlete, but they can really, really hone in on one or two things. Uh, I think Fitz, at some point, because you were talking about there's a relationship, you know, it's well documented, the neuroticism is well documented, but the like levels of anxiety and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I think Fitz is going to do a, more of a seeker psychology on that in the future, because mm-hmm. it's definitely very, very interesting. Uh, what you'll see this kind of look like will be you'll see you'll actually see this interesting enough is more drugs isn't better so there's like a bell curve of performance in most sports so the only two sports which will just respond more to drugs is powerlifting and bodybuilding sorry uh, yeah powerlifting and bodybuilding responds just literally like not a direct linear relationship but it's pretty it'll curve off at the end but it'll never stop increasing now there'll be eventually a point where loads of drugs will really slow down there's like an inflection point but those two sports the more drugs you take uh the better performance will be but for other sports it's almost a bell curve so like no drugs is obviously not good um or not as effective as taking some drugs there's a certain level of drugs for most athletic sports weightlifting included where you'll have peak performance and you have all of these variables that are peaked with like learning skills and one of the other things we'll get to in a second one of the other cons we see but you have all these things at a great place but what we will see sometimes with athletes is that they will be hyper fixated on the type of drugs they take, the quality of drugs they take, but they almost won't be willing to take less drugs. So sometimes there's been cases where we're like, look, we, we think this is interfering with your performance in a negative way. It would be best if you, to be honest, didn't take drugs for a while or you took way less drugs. And sometimes they can't let that go. And no. it, it's really neurotic. They're really fixated on the drugs being part of their training. And what we kind of see is, and I'm not saying all athletes who use form enhancing drugs, if you've got someone who's really chill and they, they're just their baseline characteristics, personality is someone who's nice and mellow, nice and chill, and we do see plenty of athletes like that, they take drugs and it goes up just a teeny tiny bit, but they are still the most chill, mellow people, and we don't have this issue. But if we see people with this kind of characteristic, their personality, before they take form enhancing drugs, 
this has the potential to exacerbate it and it can be very very negative from our point of view because it's obviously difficult to deal with someone in those scenarios who otherwise might not act like that if they weren't taking performance enhancing schmugs schmugs yeah, enhancing schmugs, schmugs. Uh, it's probably this isn't in the order we were planning it but the next thing we should probably talk about is that kind of heightened level of anxiety overall and this is certainly adds into the neuroticism and those things kind of interplay quite cruelly with each other but one of the that's a good word one of the uh most predictable um side effects you you are going to see if people are taking performance enhancing drugs is that they're going to have higher levels than normal of anxiety right so as owen was saying somebody's a pretty chill person and they start taking something they'll be slightly less chill or whatever if someone's really pumped up all the time they take something they'll be more pumped up all the time certainly it's the same if you have somebody who's borderline with general anxiety disorder or you have somebody who has uh kind of intermittent doses of of anxiety or heightened levels of anxiety every so often that's certainly going to occur more often and that's certainly our case with what we've seen with athletes is when you're talking to someone you might notice that they're kind of they'll just frequently flag things you know sort of flagging things and I'm not going to say normal people, but people who wouldn't have issues with their anxiety would never think to flag. Um, they mightn't be quite as they mightn't be as worried about going to the gym. Uh, if you have somebody who has heightened levels of anxiety, going to the gym might be quite an issue. Going to a different gym might be quite an issue. Uh, performance anxiety is obviously going to be heightened in those cases, and it just really is something that, as we're concerned with people's health like we're very very concerned with people's mental health as well and it's something you're kind of always keeping in the back of your mind of like is this person doing okay is it something to do with their kind of sporting decisions that are making them feel less okay um, and just kind of keeping on top of that touching base as a coach and making sure someone is is kind of keeping on top of it themselves um, and looking after themselves so the next one we have a con from a athletic point of view is what we see is this kind of a reduction in general athleticism from I suppose being muscle bound is, is probably the only way to talk about it in some regards as we just see sometimes for some people ironically they'll respond really well to drugs and they'll big juicy fuckers the, the big juicy fuckers <laughs> who just respond really well to drugs and they'll gain a shitload of muscle mass disproportionate what you would imagine to the amount of drugs they're taking. And while if they were bodybuilders or powerlifters, this would be fucking perfect. But for general athleticism or athletics, uh, this turns out to be very, very poor. So again, we talked about that power to rate ratio. If you go back and watch that mixed martial arts video we did in their last Q&A of that, we talked about the power to rate ratio where it can uh, negatively affect them. Again, all this applies to natural athletes as well. Um, some people just respond really well. We're, we've seen plenty of people who we were sure You'd, you'd, you'd be if we didn't know them you'd be sure they were taking performance enhancing drugs but they just respond really well to training and you get the same level of poor mobility um reduced athleticism when they do a lot more training and they gain weight because they just have a propensity to gain more muscle you know people's genetics with that that actn3 video where we talked about some people are just more likely to be more athletic so this also applies to natural people too for sure and we've seen it but it's more of a chance of happening and more drastically more immediate when someone takes performance enhancing drugs and so we see this kind of reduction in athleticism uh, one of the most interesting things um you can or one of the more interesting examples of this for example is Brajik talked about this before in one of the podcasts we did with him he talked about sprinters will actively stop taking performance enhancing drugs a couple of weeks prior to competition which is one of the reasons we might see athletics people testing positive less obviously huge amounts of corruption but that they it's a performance enhancing benefit for them to stop taking their drugs further away from competition because they lose this excess weight that their retention from hormones they lose some muscle mass but they'll keep a huge amount of the benefits and they'll actually see an inflection in their performance temporarily so there's this nice little intersection point they get if they stop taking them at the right time away from competition they'll get a performance enhancing benefit from not taking performance enhancing drugs which is surely some form of oxymoron but it is something that people who've been involved in athletics and stuff have been aware of for a very, very long time. They, most people involved in athletics would be aware of that modality, but you wouldn't 
you wouldn't think about it so much when we a lot of you guys are weightlifters, for example but um a lot of your natural athletics as well um you know you'd see this with swimmers for example if the swimmer has excessive eventually you'll get to a point where he assess his trap and shoulder mobility i'm sure your swing proportion how close you get in here would be hugely reduced which would be terrible for stride length and frequency and stuff like that so is an interesting one um from what we've seen there's you there's no way around it it just happens these people just have a propensity to gain muscle and mm. it's it's funny because it's uh some people would kill for those genetics and they're like fuck this is not what i want for performance but there you go at the last thing i'd say uh, as a kind of negative if you're dealing with an athlete who's put themselves in this position they're they've chosen to go for this amount of time there is a larger or more pressure on that person on the coach on the coach athlete relationship that the performance is going to be at a certain level at the end of that one year cycle or like one year training block um at the end of that eight week cycle 12 week cycle whatever that is it is certainly a a palpable thing so you have somebody who's obviously taken on a certain amount of risk they've decided to to forego these risks in search of something else to chase something else and if the results don't come then that risk was for nothing you know now training while you're on they're probably going to love doing it because they'll they'll get much stronger they'll be able to train more they'll be able to push themselves harder but they're still doing it to, to pursue something there's an end goal there at the end of the day and and oftentimes that end goal is going to be quite lofty because they'll have have chosen to to take these steps along the way so there is certainly like a an unspoken pressure on the athlete on the coach just to get more results to get better results to get those lofty goals that they'll have set for themselves um and it's definitely something we would come across when dealing with athletes who are on uh, one final thing if um I know some of you are probably wondering this. If if someone's shit, they're shit with without drugs. Yeah. And that's definitely true. That's not a cliche. <laughs> you genuinely, this thing where we said this years ago on the podcast, you can't make strawberry jam out of dog shit. And it really is true. And every year we see it. Um, someone's just a shit at least. Yeah. And they don't do all the things right. They stay shit. And that's something we really want to emphasize. Drugs really work if you make use of them. But just taking drugs don't work by themselves. It's something we've seen. Um... We, we've no agenda there we're not trying to <laughs> it makes no difference no, to it makes no difference to us and I, I know a lot of people are natural or hardcore natties like to think that but it just from what we've seen it just doesn't seem to be the case like if you're shit without drugs you're going to be shit with drugs or slightly less shit yeah people like to think this is thing as well of like oh I'm a really talented uh, natural athlete mm -hmm. no matter how hard I work I'm never going to beat the guy on drugs like to be honest if the guy on drugs doesn't work hard, he, like, he has a huge advantage, obviously. Fuck, yeah, yeah. If he doesn't work hard, I guarantee you in whatever gym you're training in, there's guys and girls on performance and anti drugs and you look at them, you could be in better shape than them and be stronger than them. They're just not doing things correctly. They're probably not taking the compounds correctly. They're probably not training correctly. Mm -hmm. probably not recovering correctly. Um, so I like, this is where people get caught in the weeds. Like you don't need to care yeah. if somebody else is on or not. You don't need to comment on YouTube videos being like, is he natty? Yeah, yeah. I think he's natty. Nobody cares. Like, just get better on your own. Whatever way you want to do it, if you want to do it with or without, it's, it's nobody else's decision but yours to make. Um, yeah, like, they, I, like from what we've seen, drugs aren't as effective as you think they are, but they're also very effective. Every part of who takes them isn't going to rep, uh, like, 350 kilos in the deadlift. Every way no. to might not even make it past that 120, 150 barrier we're talking about. You'd be surprised the variance of what people respond yeah. and how effective it can be. Uh, just want to say disclaimer before I finish. Disclaimer. 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 Uh, don't ask us about what drugs take because no. we, we, don't, we don't do that. We send anyone who comes to us, we just send them on to people who know what they're doing, who are full-time professional drug advisor dudes uh, so we, we don't have anything to do that so don't ask us don't email us about it please lads because we'll start making these kind of videos if you do you'll yeah. ruin it for everyone because we don't want to be going down an avenue because it's it's not all our programs are written for people who are natural if our programs are written for people on gear it's just be 24 weeks of linear progression <laughs> with no stop baby but so all our programs are in for gear all our advice is for people who are not in gear all our programs are meant for not people who are not in gear sorry all our advice is for people who are not in gear 
Uh, so this isn't where we're going. We just wanted to make this video because I know a lot of people, you would never have this information otherwise. So we just want to give it to you. There's no benefit for us to do these kind of videos. So don't comment asking my video sick uh, or about drugs sick or whatever. Do leave a comment though, but don't even. It would be great if you did leave a comment. Great if you leave a comment, but don't ask us because we will have to stop making these kind of videos because that's not the direction we want to go with this. But we do want to talk about this because I would have been very interested in this when I started 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was like, what, like how much benefit are there competitive athletes getting from performance enhancing drugs? Uh, it's very interesting. Um, you know, if you are thinking about taking drugs, I would think very seriously about it because it is a big decision. Uh, don't ask us about it. But no. I would say if you're, you know, if you're thinking about those kind of things, just be, it's a, it's a legitimate decision that will affect your life from what we've seen and it can affect us. Um, mostly positively to be honest from what we've seen but it certainly certainly can have those negative effects and they're negative effects you wouldn't really be you wouldn't really think about and the neuroticism is one where you should be really careful with you, nearly more so than the, the, the health effects the health yeah. effects are almost seem overblown from not even from coaching you, from just people we know uh, they're not as big as an issue as the as the other ones can be so just be careful um, we're not the guys to ask, but you know the guys to ask. You know they're, they're you've uh, you know like, who they are. You know who they are. Uh, <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this video. Just take it for what it is, just inform information, and then carry on out your day and still get better. The the very last thing I'd say on this, if you are going down this route and we're telling you to go and ask someone or talk to someone about it, mm -hmm. pay that person, buy some like. Yeah. Go and pay for a consultation with them. Mm -hmm. uh, get an appointment with them and yeah. do it. Stop looking on Reddit threads for your information. Stop looking on forums and stuff online, you know, or, or getting their free YouTube videos to figure things out. Mm -hmm. Pay that person for the information. We're not asking you for anything for this. We're just giving you our little our piece of information we've, we've kind of picked up along the way. Yeah. But if you're getting important information that's going to affect you for the rest of your life, yeah buy it off somebody for sure yeah there, there's there's definitely reputable people now more so than ever which is great yeah that you can just be like okay i've, I've a bit of money to spare. I'll, I'll go ask them and they will um they'll tell me the right way and wrong way to do it so there you go i uh, hope you like this video it's uh 33 minutes fucking <laughs> hell um but an interesting video i hope you liked it